when you beat up on me in a run. It's not cool. Are you kidding me? So sexy. It's a floaty pants day. I feel fine. I got no reason to need them, but I also got no reason to not use them. Huh? I'm also 15 minutes late. I don't care. If only all workouts could be rest workouts, the sport would be good. That's it. Oh, a special guest appearance? Hey guys. How much did we swim there? Like 400 meters? Well, you did. Pretty much. <laughs> 13. You? I think I was 22. Yeah. And how do you feel, Nicole? I'm excited. Excited for what? I'm excited for the bus ride. We have a <laughs> six hour bus ride from Cancun to Campeche. This is Nicole Walker, by the way. If you haven't met her, you wanna introduce yourself? No, you introduced me before. Yeah, but not everyone is senior. I'm Nicole. That's Nicole. We're racing together I'm in Campeche. Friend when it suits me. When it suits me. <laughs> when you beat up on me in a run, it's not cool. Yeah, well, you beat up on me in the swim, so it's okay. When? When you wear your floaty pants. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> That's the swim for the day. It's a whole bunch of joking around and not a lot of swimming. We'll be seeing her a little bit this week. Say nice things? No, I'm not nice. All right, a little bit of hanging for some shoulder traction, then off us. It's not gonna make any taller, Jared. Isn't this how you got tall? <laughs> This fun contortionist movement is what Jaya from Pure Lifestyle in Winnipeg calls speed bumps. He gave me this a couple years ago because I tend to get really, really tight muscles in between my shoulder blades from working at a desk. It's gone away since I've got the standing desk and the uber cool workboard. But you pull out a foam roller, put your hands behind your head, squeeze your elbows together as much as you can, go back and forth, and then when you find a tight spot, stay there until it releases. I used to have to do this after every swim. It's not so bad anymore. I could really get used to these taper, oh, Dan Nas. I think the official answer for how many times I've said taper over the last two weeks, 11 billion. But you know what? You're gonna hear it again. I could really get used to these taper process workouts. This morning, I came late to the swim. I didn't do the warm up. I did 1300 meters only in the pool and Pat was up on deck and I said, I did 1300 meters, where am I at? And he says to me, how do you feel? I say, good. He says, you feel good? Get out. Are you kidding me? Like for real? I could not believe it. And then he said that that answer changed Changes depending on where you're at in the training cycle. So the answer isn't always good. I imagine that a month ago, he would have told me to go do 3,000 more yards because he's a good guy like that. So as far as these taper process workouts go, a good rule of thumb in especially the last week is that you wanna be doing work. So today out of the 1300 meters, probably 600 of it was close to race pace, somewhere thereabouts. That's a fair bit of work, so I was chugging through it there. Arms are turning over, getting taxed a little bit, but you don't want to be getting in rest week, rest period, taper process, taper, 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 Dan, taper process workout to the point that you end the workout feeling like you've been worked hard. Finish the workout, basically just feeling good. A good way to look at it is if you were to do a workout that was just enough to wake you up, that's a taper process workout. That's a good way to look at it. I like that. I'm getting smart here with explaining stuff, like really, really incredibly intelligent. Now, I often get comments on my Instagram about people asking me how I could bike throughout the winter. Right now, it's actually not too bad. It is a balmy minus nine Celsius in Winnipeg with a wind of three kilometers an hour. Like this is tropical for us. This is as good as it gets in March. But this morning it was minus 19 and I had to dress up. So I thought I would take this time to explain how to not die when you're cycling through the winter, as in how to dress, because the same principles actually apply to how you can dress for running. So today, get your screenshots ready and Mel, get the eye soap out. Oh my eyes! My eyes! Because we're going to go through head to toe how I dress to avoid dying while I'm cycling through the winter. You're welcome, Mel's eyes. Step one is you get undressed. How do I do this without creating a complete human resources nightmare? Got it. Does anyone find it strange that I'm all worked up about not showing Mel my undies, but she's got to get a face full of Speedo every second day? 
For the base layer, this is your critical life or death layer. You want to make your base layer the layer that does the work for you. And what I use for base layers is almost always merino wool for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's wool. It's warm. It's very nice. Number two, merino wool you can wear over and over and over. It does not stink. I tend to use icebreaker stuff. Fair warning, icebreaker stuff is very delicate, so don't pull on it very hard. And number three, if you sweat in it, it maintains its warm properties. From basically my skivvies, I start with a base layer of merino wool. And yeah, I got a nice merino wool top, icebreaker leggings, and icebreaker socks. Now, something that's very critical that I would recommend to anyone biking or running, these are windproof briefs. The key to warmth in the winter is you want layered insulation against your skin and wind protection on the outside. Sometimes in your extremely sensitive spots, you want an extra set of wind protection to cover up the precious cargo. So sexy. Bam. Also getting a little bit colder, we beef up again on the socks with another layer of merino wool socks. Bam. Socks. Socks, 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 and wind briefs. Good looking man here. Next, these are wind pants that are completely windproof and they have just a very fine layer of felt on the inside that allows you to breathe, but it's not so warm like snow pants that you start sweating and it's also not bunchy. So we've got our base layer warming us, our exterior layer keeping the wind out. Keeping with that entire theme, we then bring our jacket, and this feels like tissue paper. Get an idea of how thin that is. It is so light that it almost feels like a windbreaker. This is North Face Summit Series Primalog. That is key. It took me two months to decide what the jacket was going to be because I looked at it as life and death, and it damn near was. You get stranded on the bike and you're cold in Winnipeg, that's it, you done. No more triathlon Terran. But the really nice thing about this jacket is again, Primaloft allows you to sweat and it still stays warm. And you've got a decently lightly insulated jacket, but fully windproof. And when it gets really, really cold, I don't add another big jacket. I put more insulation in the form of either a hoodie or a thicker wool base layer. Next we will go with shoes. These babies are literally old, ugly, zoot, barefoot shoes that I didn't like one bit. So I demoted them to my disgusting commuter shoes. But on these good looking little numbers, really thick neoprene, which again, 100% windproof. That's right, I have a second such good looking shoe. All right, we are now insulated and windproof on my feet. Hands, same business. Magic mittens, skidoo mitts. If there's anything that skidoo people know well, it's how to keep your hands warm. Lobster claw mitts, and that there is enough to save my hands from certain death. On the face, this gorgeous balaclava. Keep my eyes from freezing up. Throw some ski goggles on, pop the helmet over top. And now we are officially ready to go home. That is how you cycle through the winter. This is really funny, that just a talking black blob. There you go, that's it. Easy, right? Who would not wanna do this? Especially when you look this damn good. Come on, everyone should. And I think this shooting skit was HR strike free too. Such a successful idea. Woo! Home time, see you, Trainiacs.